Good morning and welcome to worship. We are gathered as the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church, and this is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of goodness and grace, we give you thanks for giving your word to your people. Plant that word among us and help us to bear good fruit in the world. And then, filled with that good news, send us out to a world in need. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading comes from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. We are at chapter 55 in the prophet's story, and this is a story of restoration. The people of Israel have been defeated at the hands of the Babylonians. They were dragged away to live in exile for about 50 years, and now they are going to be restored back to their home. And God will speak, and God's word will make it happen. When God speaks, God's word does what God says it will do. It is like rain coming down from the heavens. The rain falls and it brings growth. In much the same way, God's word will go out and God's word will bring abundance and joy and new life for God's people. We hear the reading from the prophet. A reading from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the iris, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Psalm 65, 9 through 13. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. 
You prepare the grain for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul writes this letter to a very early Christian community and he's working with them on the subject of righteousness. God has given, in the Old Testament, God has given law and commandments, but Paul argues that the law and the commandments do not put us right with God. The law and the commandments, they serve as a guide, or they reveal our failings and our sinfulness, but they don't put us right with God. Even worse, Paul argues, all of our efforts to follow all the laws and to get all of the rules and law right has the undesired effect that we think we're making ourselves better. We think we're making ourselves more pleasing before God. We try to lift ourselves up and Paul says that's our arrogance, that's our sin. In this writing, Paul says real righteousness, genuine righteousness, is trusting God. Trusting that when God says, I want to have a relationship with you and that relationship will last forever, righteousness, real righteousness, is trusting the word of God. We hear from Paul's letter. A reading from Romans, the eighth chapter. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walked not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live accordingly to the flesh set their minds on the on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, that the mind that is set on the flesh is also to God. It does not submit it God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have, who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, see, the body is dead because of, this, because of sin. The spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord.
Hi there. Today I'm going to talk to you about the parable of the sower. This is chapter 13 in the book of Matthew. And it says, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seeds, like this, some fell upon the path, some fell on rocky places, some seed fell along thorns, and some even fell on good soil. So what we are called to do is we are called to spread God's message. Just like we're throwing the seed, we are spreading. Just like you would do when you throw seeds everywhere, you want them to spread around. Well, that's our job. We need to spread God's message, his grace, his love, and we are not going to pick and choose where those people are, we are going to spread it to everyone. Just like God cast the net far and wide because we know he loves all of his people. And he says, here you go, take it. Wherever you are, take it. And he continues to spread it all throughout. And that is our job. So we can still spread the message in grace no matter what kind of soil it lands on. So I want you to remember that we will continue to spread his love and his grace and we will not worry about where it lands or who receives it as long as we are continuing to spread it so if you will pray with me dear jesus thank you for letting us spread your message to all your people help us Spread your love far and wide. In your name we pray. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke this word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of our Lord. When Jesus speaks in parables, it is always great because parables work on so many levels. Certainly this parable can be about us. There's many different ways that we or that people hear and receive God's word. Some hear it and receive it enthusiastically, but then it dies out. Some people, the word goes out and it seems like it's dead before it ever gets started, but with some. With some, the word of God flourishes. 
But Jesus also, he doesn't use this parable as a judgment, so he's not judging people or judging us for the different ways that we hear God's word. It's just reality, Jesus seems to say. It's just reality that not everyone hears and receives and responds to God's word in the same way. But then this parable also says so much about God. I once heard a sermon from another pastor who shared about his grandfather who sowed seed by hand. He talked about how that grandfather had sowed those seeds for so many years and he knew exactly how to throw, exactly how hard, how far, and how to account for the movement of the wind. You got so good at it, you didn't waste the seed. But in this parable, God, or the sower, keeps on sowing abundantly, generously, almost recklessly. The seeds fall on the road. The seeds fall among the rocks. The seeds fall among thorns. This sower is just putting the seed out everywhere. Because the point of the story is that God is so willing so eager to let the word of God go out to everyone, everywhere, so that all the world might hear. The word of God will go out. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Generous God, sow the good seed of your word among your people, the church. Help it to bear good fruit so that we might witness to you everywhere we are called to serve. God of creation, we give thanks for all of the good things that surround us. Bring growth to your world, supply abundance so that all your people may have enough. God of all people and all nations, guide us in our choices. Lead us towards care and concern for those who are in need. Bring peace among people so that we live together as though we know and care that you would want us to be one in Christ. God who heals. Bring hope and healing among people who are suffering. Take care of those who suffer from diseases. Bring guidance to this nation and to this world so that we might recover from the COVID-19 virus. And be with all those who work as healers and healthcare workers. We pray, God, especially for all those in need that we name silently before you. Give them hope and encouragement in the days ahead. God who walks among us, we give thanks for the people of Fieldburg Lutheran Church. Guide our serving and guide all of our work so that on this day and all days, we might be examples of your love, your grace, and your compassion. God everlasting, we give you thanks for the generations who have gone before us. Help us to be moved by their example so that we would live faithfully and in service in the name of Jesus Christ. We commend all these prayers to you, 
trusting that you will hear us and respond according to the generosity and graciousness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.